Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Good morning. Welcome to Dalhousie University's Spring Convocation. Please be seated. My name is Kim Brooks. I'm Dalhousie's acting president and acting. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. We're switching today. <laughs> acting provost and vice president academic. And I'll be guiding us through today's ceremonies. By the end of the ceremony, who knows what job I'll have? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please turn off your phone. It's the only thing you've got on you that I'll ask people to silence. Otherwise, you can do all of the cheering you want. Your kids can scream. All of the other noises are, are very welcomed. I'm going to begin by asking Elder Christmas to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Congratulations. Thank right? you. Could I ask you to rise, please? <coughs> I have asked the Creator to keep you safe while you are here in Halifax and to keep you safe while you're driving or flying home. <coughs> I have also asked the Creator to give us lots of rain to douse all the fires and keep us safe from future fires. And I welcome each and every one of you to Mi'kma'ki, our ancestral land. And you are more than welcome to stay here. And if any of the graduate students uh, feel that they have uh, Aboriginal blood, please let me know. I have uh, gifts for our people to congratulate them on getting this far. I know this is only a tip of the iceberg, but I know you can do even more. And I thank each and every one of you for listening to this old man. <laughs> Have a nice day, everybody, and take care. God bless. <clears throat> Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Lanuk. We are all treaty people. There are three key components to this statement. First is the acknowledgement that Dalhousie sits on Mi'kma'ki, the territory of the Lanuk. The second is the acknowledgement that the territory is both ancestral and unceded, recognizing that the peace and friendship treaties signed between the British Crown and the Mi'kmaq did not involve surrender of land. Finally, we are all treaty people reflects that the peace and friendship treaties apply to all parties involved, indigenous and settler alike. At Dalhousie, we continue to work on and build on these critically important relationships and friendships, and we remain committed to the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Report. We recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kma'ki known as Nova Scotia over 400 years. African Nova Scotians came to the province through enslavement or through freeing enslavement elsewhere. Having resided in the region for over 400 years, African Nova Scotian contributions to Nova Scotia and Canada began over 150 years before Canada became a country. I might mention that I noticed this morning the Black Loyalist Heritage Center in Birchtown has had to be closed as a result of some of the fires in that region. And if you have not been there, I urge you to go, it's spectacular. 
We're thankful to the indigenous and African Nova Scotian faculty members, staff, students, administrators, and elders who partner with us in developing and enhancing pathways, programs, and admissions guidelines, curriculum welcoming spaces, and community partnerships. We know we have much more to do to transform our colonial past to a future of inclusive excellence. I'd also like to offer a thank you to our firefighters and first responders, and a thank you to everyone in this group who is stepping up to help us and support our communities in Halifax and Shelburne. Thank you. Bruce Springsteen is, <laughs> where is this going? Is 73 years old. He's on a tour that began on February 1st and won't be finished until December 10th. It requires roughly 95 performances. The usual gap between performances is one day, and the longest gap is the two-week window allocated for the band to head to Europe and then back to North America. I love Bruce Springsteen. I've certainly over-talked my addiction to Bruce Springsteen in classes over the years, but let me revisit him today because among other reasons, he's one of the few musical artists I could think of that both you and your parents and your grandparents might all have some vague knowledge of. It's worth thinking about Bruce Springsteen for three reasons. First, his lyrics are terrific and most people don't actually listen to them. But if you listen to them, especially while driving alone late at night on a dark gravel road when the scars are shimmering in the narrow lane of sky, you can see because the shadows of the trees are bending into the space in front of the road, in front of you in the car, and you're hoping a deer won't spring in front of the car, ideally while you're drinking coffee out of a paper cup, you know that it's gonna be a long night and you might find yourself weeping. The second reason I love Bruce Springsteen is because he plays full out. When he gives a concert, it is three hours of sweaty mess. There is no warm-up band or fancy dancing. There is no elaborate light show or opening act. The man is 73 years old. The Financial Times headline yesterday on Springsteen's concert at the Murray Field Stadium was, quote, Bruce Springsteen battles mortality in three-hour Edinburgh show, end quote. There are days that I whine about sitting for a few hours on a team's meeting. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen is doing 95 three-hour concerts. Each one leaves his shirt a different color than it was at the beginning because it is so thick with sweat and sometimes my back is a little sore at the end of the day. I suspect that computer science and I certainly know that life is a lot like a Bruce Springsteen concert. It is, I suspect, relentless hours of sweaty mess. When I was a kid, my dad would put Bruce Springsteen on the record player. The album, The River, was released in 1980 and it marked my childhood. We would play Hungry Heart as loudly as the sound system would allow and my mom, dad, sister and I would jump on our couches screaming the lyrics at each other. I met her in a Kingstown bar. We fell in love, I knew it had to end. We took what we had and we ripped it apart. Now here I am down in Kingstown again. Everybody's got a hungry heart. My parents had atypical views about couches. Anyway, what I learned from those moments, and these were foundational lessons, is that Bruce's music reminds us of the undulations of life. You might hope your life will be smooth. You might hope it will be easy. Odds are not in your favor. <laughs> Whose idea was this? But Bruce is not a depressing man. The salve is that if you keep your head down, if you sweat, if you stay focused, if you do not surrender, then you can cut a glorious place for yourself in this world. If you haven't already, I recommend you acclimatize yourself to sweating and errors and perhaps also to a small piece of glory given that you've chosen careers in computer science. Think about what lies ahead for you, new languages, frameworks and concepts, quantum computing with hardware that can process many sequences simultaneously, accelerating possibilities in software engineering, new augmented reality, virtual reality, and extended reality applications, edge computing, and probably also some calls from the people sitting on your left asking you to fix some of their gadgets. <laughs> Speaking of those people, let me turn to my third thing about Bruce Springsteen. He does not do things alone. That's not entirely true, of course. He spent a small amount of time as a solo artist, but expect, excepting Nebraska, I try to forget about that era. He is at his best with the E Street Band. The E Street Band first pulled itself together in October 1972, and the band toured with Bruce on the release of his first album, Greetings from Ashbury Park, New Jersey. 
The members of the band have changed a little over time, but more than 50 years later, they still look very similar. The famous Clarence Clemens, known as, quote, the big man, was the E Street Band saxophonist until he died in 2011. And in super cool things that I love, Clarence Clemens' nephew, Jake Clemens, started playing the saxophone with the E Street Band in 2012. Clarence described meeting Bruce Springsteen like this. Remember, Clarence was 6'4 and 240 pounds. One night we were playing in Ashbury Park. I'd heard the Bruce Springsteen band was at a club called the Student Prince on a break between sets. I walked over there. On stage, Bruce used to tell different versions of this story, but I'm a Baptist, so mine is the truth. A windy, rainy night it was, and when I opened the door, the whole thing flew off its hinges and blew down the street. This band were on stage, but staring at me framed in the doorway. And maybe that did make Bruce a little nervous, because I said to him, I want to play with your band. And he said, sure, you do anything you want. <laughs> the first song we did was an early version of Spirit of the Night. Bruce and I looked at each other and didn't say anything, we just knew. We knew we were the missing links in each other's lives. He was what I had been searching for. In one way, he was just a scrawny little kid, but he was a visionary. He wanted to follow his dreams, so from then on, I was part of history. Graduates, look around you. This is a pretty good snapshot of your E Street band. This is what you have been searching for. You may try to do some things without your people. It's good to do things alone or with different people that are not your people but a lot of your life will come back to the folks in this room. And so I urge you to lean into the sweat and the bumps on the road and hang on to the knowledge that on Someday Girl, I don't know when, we're gonna get to that place where we really wanna go and we'll walk in the sun, but till then tramps like us, baby, we were born to run. As we proceed with the presentation of diplomas and degrees, we want you to feel like the celebration is not too formal, so please feel free to cheer and clap for your graduates. You can also take photographs and post them on hashtag DowellGrad, and we are recording this so you can watch it again and again. Let me take a moment to introduce those people who are up here on the stage and who will be participating in the ceremony with me. Uh, Elder Christmas, you've already met, who gave the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Scott Bryson is our Chancellor. Dr. Frank Harvey is actually the Acting President and Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Dr. Louise Spatiri, Chair of Senate. Dr. Andrew Rao Chaplin, Dean, Faculty of Computer Science. Dr. Stephanie Bernier, recipient of the DPMG Early Career Award and University Beadle and Dr. Thomas Trappenberg, professor with the Faculty of Computer Science and our convocation speaker. I'll ask the front row to sit down and the row behind them to please stand, as well as any faculty or staff who happen to be in the audience with us. These are the folks who have spent their time with you. You have you know, taken Kleenexes out of their hands and they have celebrated your success. I give you the faculty and staff of Dalhousie. It's now my pleasure to actually introduce the Acting President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University, Dr. Frank Harvey, who will offer some opening and welcoming remarks. Chancellor Scott Bryson, Chair of Dalhousie's Board of Governors, Cheryl Fraser, who is not here today, I should have fixed that. Uh, VP Academic and Provost, Kim Brooks, again, what a great speech, thank you. <laughs> Elder Tom Christmas, Christmas, thank you very much for your beautiful uh, Mi'kmaq welcome. Dean Andrew Rao Chaplin, family and friends, members of the academic uh, procession, and most importantly, our graduates. It is an honor for me to be part of this very important ceremony and celebration today and to have the distinct privilege of serving, I just found out, as the acting <laughs> vice president, academic, and provost. <laughs> Before I go any further, uh, I want to acknowledge that we are all so uh, deeply saddened and concerned about the fires in Tantallon and Hammonds Plains and Shelburne and other areas 
of the province, the state of emergency that has been declared by Halifax and the province. I know I speak on behalf of everyone here today and our entire Dalhousie community. Our thoughts and prayers, are, of course, are with the families who have been affected uh, by this tragedy, forced to evacuate their homes, including many members of our Dow community. We've reached out to our students, our faculty, and our staff to facilitate supports and to accommodate individuals who are affected. We will continue to reach out, uh, monitor the situation, and see where and how we can help out as we move forward. To our graduates uh, today, congratulations. What an awesome day. I suspect many of you are processing a few uh, emotions right now. Uh, for some, sadness at leaving Dow in Halifax and your friends. For others, joy at leaving Dow and Halifax <laughs> and friends to begin a new job, uh, and probably a new program. <clears throat> Possibly a little fear and anxiety for those who aren't quite sure what's next. Don't worry, you've got this, and I'll explain why in a moment. And many, I'm sure, are feeling immense gratitude uh, for the love and the support that you all received from many of the people here today. But I hope that among the emotions you're working through today, you feel enormous pride. And let's review some of the reasons why I think you deserve to be formally celebrated and acknowledged today, why you should be so incredibly proud of your work. You've spent hundreds of hours in classes, in tutorials, in labs. You've read thousands of pages from textbooks, journal articles, research reports. You've written and studied hundreds of pages of notes that you've extracted from those textbooks and tutorials, and labs. You've solved thousands of problems and debugged endless lines of code. You've had the opportunity to gain valuable work experience in co-ops with industry. You've practiced and delivered dozens of presentations, both in person and online. You've completed hundreds of quizzes and midterms and final exams. You've engaged with local groups and organizations through community service. You've earned valuable work experience through experiential learning opportunities. You found time to be student leaders in societies, athletics, extracurricular activities. And you have, you have also explored, had the opportunity to explore different cultures and made many new friends working on team projects. What else have you acquired as a direct consequence of the enormous amount of time that you've invested over the last four to five years in your respective programs? To be honest, I'm a political scientist. Uh, my entire academic career was teaching international relations, international conflict, crisis, and war, American foreign policy. So I wasn't quite sure what skills you picked up. I don't have that knowledge. So I did a little research. And this is some of what I've discovered. Obviously, you've acquired expertise in several programming languages. I won't list them here. The list is obviously very long and, from my perspective, constantly changing. You've acquired problem-solving skills to take complex programming problems and develop logical and efficient solutions. You've acquired deep knowledge and understanding of data structures, arrays, linked lists, trees, graphs, and algorithms, sorting, searching, graph algorithms, dynamic programming. You understand computer architecture and systems. You've acquired knowledge of processors, memory management, operating systems, and computer networks. How am I doing? Not bad. <laughs> you have a solid understanding of database uh, management systems, software development methodology, software testing practices, software development cycles. You have knowledge of web technologies, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, some of you have picked up expertise in cybersecurity to understand common security vulnerabilities and countermeasures to protect sensitive data, identify vulnerabilities, combat cyber threats, hacking, malware, data breaches. You know how to process, manage, and extract meaningful insights from very, very large databases. You've acquired strong communication skills to explain complex technical concepts to people like me who have absolutely no clue what anything I said just, just said means. I have no clue. For example, you know what an Internet of Things means. 
and the importance of scalability, interoperability, privacy, and data integrity. I don't know what the Internet of Things means. You have knowledge, if not expertise, in artificial intelligence and machine learning and the latest advancements in these fields, and you understand how to leverage AI while addressing the positive, the negative, the intended, and the unintended consequences, and the ethical dilemmas associated with that revolution, including fears that AI at some point in time, if not managed well, will end the world. How do you feel about that responsibility to manage that? By the way, the research I conducted to identify the list of skills and expertise your computer science degrees have given you, I extracted from an eight-word prompt on ChatGPT, another brilliant, <laughs> brilliant product developed by, developed by computer scientists completing programs like the programs you completed. I consider myself a prompt engineer now. So. <laughs> you are leaders who will go on to address many of our most significant local, national, and global challenges, all of which will absolutely require your expertise, your knowledge, your skills, your commitment, and your contribution to solutions related to climate change, renewable energy, smart cities, efficient transportation systems, healthcare, and biotechnology medical diagno diagnostics, treatment plans, genomic research. You will contribute to equity, diversity, and inclusion by developing assistive technologies for people with a range of disabilities, critical infrastructure related to addressing cybersecurity and privacy, privacy. The list of puzzles and crises and policies and challenges that you have the skills and the knowledge to address is endless and your choices are limitless. But I also know that as you completed your respective degrees, you spent a good part of your time managing university work, university commitments, your jobs, family, social lives, dealing with relationships and social pressures, being away from family and friends, fears and anxieties about your program and your future, student housing challenges, managing your budget, some, sometimes juggling more than one job, and you had to do all of that while navigating a global pandemic and the transition to online and hybrid learning and the disorienting effects of that deep sense of isolation. All of this required extraordinary and truly inspiring levels of resilience and perseverance and dedication, and I am sure many of you had to deal with the personal and emotional crisis of losing family members, perhaps tied to the pandemic. Your graduation today speaks volumes about your capacity and your willingness to succeed anywhere by applying the life lessons, the skills, the knowledge, the expertise, the passions, the resilience, and the life choices that you've lived through over the last few years as you obtained your degree. These are some of the reasons that we're celebrating today. These are some of the reasons your family, your friends, people on the stage, our entire Dalhousie community. These are the reasons that we are so incredibly proud of you. These are the reasons you inspire us. So please make some noise. Congratulations. Convocation also signifies the transition from being a very successful student to becoming a Dow alumni, joining uh, an international network of over 155,000 graduates who have gone on to make significant contributions and significant differences in the communities that they serve around the world. As a university, we obviously take immense pride in the success of our graduate students. But we are also fully committed to becoming an even stronger university by building on our commitments to faculty, our commitments to students, our commitments to communities, to our researchers, our ongoing commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, building on our reputation, building on our legacy so that the value of your degree, what it means to have a degree from Dalhousie will continue to appreciate and to expand and to grow over time. So thank you for choosing Dow. Thank you for allowing us 
to be part of your educational journey. Congratulations on the wonderful achievement. Enjoy this special moment and please stay in touch. Congratulations. Thank you, President Harvey. Will graduates please rise? Chancellor Bryson. As Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees upon those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. <clears throat> by virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to the respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining there to those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by the Senate. Admito vos ad gratum. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. I'll now ask Dr. Andrew Rao Chaplin, Dean, Faculty of Computer Science, and Ella McDonald, an orator and alum from the Fountain School of Performing Arts, to present the candidates who are here today receiving degrees. Chancellor Bryson, I am honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Computer Science who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. Noah Getun Abai. <laughs> Louisa Souza with Sexton Distinction. Arham Arshad with the Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Jeffrey Belcher. Sarah Bond, Cooperative Program. Christopher Boudreau. Francis Brido. Patrick Cairns. Richard Thomas Campbell. Oliver Charles Cormier, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Noah Gabriel Cormier Retiacek, Cooperative Program.
Rebecca Melissa Das. Rahil Zulfikar Danwani, Cooperative Program. Sahib Dillon. Colton Elson with distinction. Sergio Fernander. <laughs> Shahad Omar Cartabil with Sexton Distinction. Griffin Lidstone, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Matthew Jeffrey Mailman, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Monik Kalpeshkumar Rinaben Modi, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Julia Olmsted. <laughs> Vincent Edward. Ordinelli with Sexton Distinction. RF Abdi Poor. Elizabeth Schultz with Sexton Distinction and the University Medal in Applied Computer Science. <laughs> Daniil Slesarenko. Zicheng Wong with the Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Bryce Robert James Wiedemann with Distinction. Lauren Ann Yaden. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. Chancellor Bryson, 
I am honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Computer Science who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Computer Science. Bekruz Abdurakhmanov. Sayed Hani Raza Abadi, with honors, cooperative program, first class honors. <laughs> Moaz Ahmad. Gufran Ahmed. <laughs> Razan Amur Halmud Al Habsi. Abdullah al Makadhim, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Mazin Asim Abdulaziz al Raisi, with distinction. Amar Al Siabi with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Keanu Paul Villarta Alba, Cooperative Program. Abdel Wahab Ali Musa. <laughs> Eli Malcolm Anderson. <laughs> Kelvin Anish Bagteria, Cooperative Program. Ichiro Vanskota, Cooperative Program. <laughs> Dishant Vidya Kumar Behera, with distinction. Daniel Patrick Beliveau. <laughs> Han Ching B with Sexton Distinction. Mingxun Bo, with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Joshua Burt.
Jia Hong Sao. Megan Alexandra Tsao, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Leland Thomas Leo Carter. Hao Chen. Tzu Yuan Chen with Sexton Distinction. Xiaojing Chen. Yao Chen Chen. Ox Amir Chinara, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Eric Miles Conrad. Andrew James Cooper. <laughs> Jessica Doherty, cooperative program with distinction. Hisham Elokta, Cooperative Program with Distinction. <laughs> Zephyr Sid Corpus Espino. Dong Hyun Go with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> e Yun Gong with Sexton Distinction. with honors, first class honors. <laughs> Jamel Hamoud, with distinction.
Wida Han. Adam Hawkins. Are you her? <laughs> Pei Tong Ho with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Allison Claire Hurdle. Ben Hoig with Sexton Distinction. Evan Hookstra with Cooperative Program. Sarah Alexis Celeste Hughes with Sexton Distinction. Peiyi Zhang, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. Jiu <laughs> Jin. Junaid Ahmed Jisum, Bachelor of Computer Science. Ridwan Kabir, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. Aryan Aziz Katani, cooperative program. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Sophia Kim. Amit Lalani, cooperative program with distinction. <laughs> Min Lee, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction.
<laughs> Minsu Lee. Boying Lei <laughs> Richie Lee, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. Anna Leong, cooperative program with distinction. <laughs> Pechi Lee, with Sexton distinction. Chin Leung with distinction. <laughs> Yi Shun Li. Yishuan Liu Josh Allen McDonald with distinction Royce McIntosh with distinction. <laughs> Taylor Audrey Marie McIntyre. Justin McKinnon with distinction. <laughs> Malet Maffey, cooperative program. Gautam Tirupati Man Manadang Managandan <laughs> Liam Alexander Martel, Cooperative Program. James John McKinley. <laughs> Boji Mung. Isan Musavipur, 
Sexton Distinction. Adam Sean Murphy. Adam Najar, Cooperative Program. Himel Dave Knott, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Nat Nguyen, Cooperative Program. Thomas Nickerson, with Sexton Distinction. Unbeen Park. Yonha Park. Nisarg Hetelbin Harish Kumar Patel. Cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. Parth Ashwinbai Patel. Evelyn Francis Paulino, Cooperative Program. Tracy Pia, Cooperative Program with Distinction. Sarah Elizabeth Pollock Jordan with distinction. Alexi Provatilo with distinction. Waldemar Oliver Prezenko, Cooperative Program. Ashe Raj, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Ashokumar Raja, Cooperative Program. Daria Ravel, Sexton Distinction.
Yi Shu. Jalal Abdul Hamid Sino, Cooperative Program with Distinction. Emily Tan, Cooperative Program with Sexton Distinction. Igor Taternikov, with honors, first class honors, and the University Medal in Computer Science. <laughs> Hugh William Thompson, cooperative program with Sexton Distinction. Thomas Van Ohm. Kan Bao Vu, with distinction. Markley Wakeland. <laughs> Sinan Wang, with distinction. <laughs> Zhen Wang. Alexander Plummer Wilson. Nathaniel Plummer Wilson with distinction. Shooting Shia with honors, first class honors. <laughs> Ufang Shu, Sexton Distinction. Absley, Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Wen Yi Yao. Majid Youssef, with distinction. <laughs> S 
Sal Zahor. Yan Zheng. Janie Zhang with Sexton Distinction. Hao Yi Zhang with honors, first class honors. Chi Jung with Sexton Distinction. <laughs> Yan Ji Jung. Yeja Jung with distinction. <laughs> Yulong Jung. Soyu Jung Jin Jung with honors, first class honors. Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Computer Science. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, I am honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Computer Science who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Tanuj Sachindra Fernando, major in Computer Science. Ava Powelson, major in computer science with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science. We have completed the part of the ceremony where we have graduates crossing the stage, and so let me invite you to thank Ella McDonald. <laughs> graduates, folks have been clapping for you and shouting and cheersing. 
taking photographs, it's your chance to please stand, turn and face the people who are here with you and give them a rousing thank you. Please be seated. Dean Rao Chaplin, over to you. So, I have an introduction to make. Uh, Dr. Trappenberg graduated in 1992 with a PhD in theoretical physics from Aachen University in Germany. And after a postdoctoral research positions in Dalhousie, uh, the Recon Center for Brain Sciences in Japan, Oxford University, he joined us here in the Faculty of Computer Science at Dow. His research group is interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and real intelligence, computational neuroscience. You know, he's published two well-known books on the fundamentals of computational neuroscience, and Thomas has helped create a number of AI startups in areas as diverse as robotic farming uh, and blood analysis. Um, about 10 years ago, I remember having a coffee with uh, Thomas, and he told me really excitedly, you know, this deep learning stuff, it's going to change the world. I, I only wish I'd taken that as investment advice. <laughs> so, you know, in addition to being a fine scholar, uh, Thomas is an engaged citizen. Uh, you know, he's run in multiple federal and provincial elections, and he was the leader of the Green Party here in Nova Scotia between 2016 and 21. He recently received the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medal for his environmental engagement. Um, and in case you, you want to dispute any of the finer points of, you know, um, ecological policy or AI, I'll just note that he holds a fifth degree black belt in karate. <laughs> so without further ado, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Trappenberg to address the convocation. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, distinguished um, platform party, my dear staff members who are sitting down there and as usually do all the work, um, family and friends, you know, we all know how important you are uh, that we, that our graduates can really concentrate on studying, so thank you. Dear graduates, you did it. You did it. I know it has not always been easy, and I am certainly guilty of keeping you probably uh, too busy most of the time. But you did it anyhow, so congratulations. What makes me happy is the knowledge that this degree will help you in the future. It is the foundation on which you can build, the foundation to your path forward. But I hate to tell you, this doesn't mean that everything now will fall into your lap. So if I maybe can give you just one important advice. Don't wait for others to come to you. I hope you have learned to take initiatives. Go forward and things will happen. We are living in a very interesting and challenging times. And I think you're a very special group of graduates. You all experienced COVID that revealed so many of shortages in our society. And there are now so many new challenges. 
For example, the world seems getting divided into separate fractions, with autocratic nations challenging our democracies. It is sad to see how a few narcissists can prevent the rest of us of being friends and respect each other. But they can only do this because we let them. I grew up in Germany where our history of just standing by allowed horrible things to happen. We were therefore taught in, in school that we really need to speak up if we think things are not right. This includes climate change. My father told me about it 40 years ago, and scientists warned about it for over 100 years. Of course, we might all be looking forward to have a few more palm trees in Nova Scotia or to spend Christmas Day on Crystal Crescent Beach, but we all know that it is not the few degrees in average temperature which is the challenge. The challenge is, and the problem is, the huge weather fluctuations that will change our ecology and our economy. So to speak up, I foolishly ran in 11 federal and provincial elections, led the Green Party, as I've heard, for five years. And quite frankly, I don't think I succeeded. Um, I definitely should have asked for advice to our honorable uh, chancellor, longtime MP, uh, Scott Bryson, or maybe uh, join a more popular group. But, uh, but I didn't learn certainly a lot. I learned that there are solutions, lots of exciting solutions, and that your generation has the power to change it if you would only take this opportunity. I learned that we can address a lot of shortcomings in our society with the changes that will come. I think it is exciting that you can be instrumental to make a better society. For example, I think that guaranteed livable income will be a game changer. But you need to become active now. No more excuses. There's now another huge challenge where we, as computer scientists, are at the center. The challenge um, of a new level of artificial intelligence. Jeff Hinton, one of the pioneers of AI, who just uh, quit Google and becomes a doomsday preacher, saying AI will soon become more intelligent than humans. I don't know about that. At least I don't know what really intelligence is only that I haven't found it in politics. <laughs> I, I certainly think that uh, large language models can outperform us easily, at least me, in writing, you know, essays. I should have really used it to write this speech, you know, I have to learn this. But, um, and that's good. So let's use it, if it is good with that. It's not even that astonishing that it will outperform me. Uh, a pocket calculator can outperform me in calculating the product of two numbers. That is not the problem. But I agree with Jeff Hinton that I'm very worried about the misuse of this technology. I also think that politics is failing again in addressing the issues. We have commonly addressed new technology issues with laws such as mandating a driver's license to operate a car, or stiff penalties for producing fake money. But we are far behind addressing the new AI possibilities. And this is what the call for a, for, you know, a moratorium on further research is about. Of course, we won't stop our research, but a recognition that we are behind with our society to really digest what is coming down the pipeline. So we must know these tools correctly, and we need to be very clear about the ethical implications beyond the, final, uh, the, the basic mechanisms. The first thing I asked ChatGPT was, 
What is heavier, one kilogram of lead or 2,000 gram of feathers? Mr. President, you know the answer? I hope you all know the answer. But more interesting is what uh, ChatGPT answered, and that is they weigh the same. Now, why is this? Well, the question is usually asked, what is heavier, one kilogram of lead and one, kil of one kilogram of feathers? And the common answer is the same. What JetGPT does, it's a big, it learns a big dictionary. What is the most likely word to follow in this context? This is not intelligence. I also study the brain and know that they work very differently. But again, don't be afraid of this. These are good tools. What I'm afraid is that they are misused. So we all have to be an alert, um, but we also have to see that there are huge opportunities uh, for you to create your future. The world will change and you will be the drivers. Take these opportunities. And we here at Dell, and I know your family and friends will back you up. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You, if you're active and honest, there will be solutions. So here is my final assignment from me to you. You have to think about how you want to contribute to the future, to your future of your generation. How will you become active? I know you can do it. Congratulations. Our time this morning is coming to a close. Graduates, as you leave the auditorium, you'll find members of our Alumni Association there with a Dalhousie pin for you that I hope you wear with pride, and that when you're wearing it, you remember how proud we are of you in this particular day. I'm gonna ask uh, that we stand for the singing of O Canada, and I'll invite Maddie Matson and Chloe Dion, Dalhousie Voice students, to come and join us in that. I'm a 
fire.